All right, guys, so one of you asked me to go ahead and put this lens through the ringer in terms of the wobbly jello effect that has been well documented with this lens, especially on the R system mirrorless camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a walk down the side rock right in front of my apartment and keep an eye out for those wobbly jello-y effects on the top left hand and right hand corners of the screen so that you can determine if this is actually gonna be a really good and attractive um, I want to say lens for vlogging because 16 is pretty wide as you can tell I'm fully extended now which is absolutely ridiculous this is sort of like with my arm bent right now it's not bad uh, my settings are 1 over 50 f uh, 6.3 right now because it's really bright and sunny I still don't have a uh, variable ND for this lens because it's relatively new ISO is as possibly low as I can go uh, maybe I can go ahead and crank that up but I will lose a little bit of the sky here Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a walk and please, again, keep an eye out for that wobbly jello effect, which might concern you vloggers. So here we go. Hand is bent. I'm on a switch pod right now. I'm looking straight at camera so that you can determine if this is going to be wobbly. Now, I'm going to take a glance at it. I can't really tell. Maybe I'll take a look at it in post. But as far as I can tell, it's actually pretty stable. Um, I don't know if that's going to be bothering you as a vlogger or anything like that, but this is going to be more of a studio talking head lens kind of video so that I, I can, you know, widen my field of view at home. But again, if you're interested in this lens and vlogging, it's actually not bad. It's really lightweight and aside from a mirrorless camera, can't go wrong with it. So here we go. Let me switch hands. I'm getting pretty tired. And let me know if you see wobbly effect, if it's actually going to be so distracting for you that you're gonna pass up on this lens? I really doubt it, but at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. Um, I really don't see much of a distraction. Um, it's actually pretty stable in my opinion. Again, this is just the IBIS, no digital stabilization whatsoever, which I'm guessing is more than enough for video if you're gonna be vlogging around. So that's it, there's your test. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Before we begin, I realize one thing while shooting with this lens. Either it's too wide for my street photography or I'm just not a wide angle kind of guy. Having said that though, I don't want you to think that being biased to other focal lengths has anything to do with how I'm about to review this lens. I'm gonna set aside my own personal opinions so that I can bring you an unbiased take on this new Canon RF 16mm f2.8 STM. You guys know me by now, this isn't gonna be a Gerald Undone style review by any means because I'm not a pixel peeper, nor I think anyone should be, but I definitely wanted to hop on here and share three reasons why I thought it was worth getting. Without further ado, let's jump into reason number one, and that is the footprint. At first glance, you might not think much of this lens because let's face it, there's just not much to it. It shares the same build as the newest RF Nifty 50, and when paired together, it'll take a bald eagle to tell them apart. Goes without saying, it weighs the same, and you can slide it just about anywhere. <laughs> as far as the actual build is concerned, it's got the same control ring as with all of the newer RF glass. I personally set mine to control my ISO, but hey, it's a free country. You do with it what you please. Also, like the Nifty 50, it features the control focus buttons on the sides so that you can decide if you're gonna be using the control ring as an additional setting or if you're gonna go manual with your photos and videos. It's worth noting that if you choose to set your control, your focus, you're gonna to have to tweak your settings in the body. I go more in depth on that Nifty 50 review here and you might wanna click on that after you're done with this one. The second reason why I pulled the trigger on this lens is the versatility. As you saw in the beginning of this video, this is a serviceable lens as far as vlogging is concerned. It's got its quirks, as you can see with the jello effect on the corners, but let's face it, if you're talking to camera, who's gonna focus on the corners and not your face? Get over it. If you're a chronic vlogger who's always out and about, you're gonna love this lens because it's light, it feels like a feather on your body, and its 2.8 aperture will let you vlog until sundown and then some. Now, as far as photography is concerned, this lens takes great pictures for what you're investing. If you're just now migrating into the RF system like myself, this is gonna be a solid lens on which to get started in landscape, architectural, and just general wide angle photography. In all honesty, 
I was kind of skeptical to get this lens because I had heard it had massive vignetting around the corners when shooting raw and not gonna lie to you, it was definitely confirmed. I did, however, wait until Lightroom came out with the picture profile for this lens and that gets fixed in post-processing. So if that's what's holding you back, have no fear, the corrector is here. You're gonna have to deal with a slight crop for obvious reasons, but the pictures come out quite nice in, I wanna say 75% of the area, while corners are gonna be a little bit tough, but that's to be expected with a lens like this. That brings me to my third and final reason why I got it myself, and that's the price. As of the making of this video, the 16mm f2.8 is running for $299. Yes, $299. You heard that right, folks. Who's gonna beat a fixed wide angle with an f2.8 aperture in this market? Nobody. That's who. What more can you ask for? This is gonna give you great pictures of mountains and buildings as well as make any room look huge because of its focal length, and that's exactly why I got it. Landscapers, architectural, real estate, and vloggers aren't gonna think twice about dishing out $299 for what you're getting. This is a steal of a lens, and it's a great starting point to get into general photography and on which to master your first Canon mirrorless camera. Furthermore, if something were to happen to this lens, like you dropping it or someone jacks it, you'd only be out $299, which is the same thing I said for the Nifty 50. It's truly an ultimate bang for your buck. So there you have it. That's my quick review of the RF 16mm f2.8 STM. What'd you guys think? Is it a pass for you or would you invest 300 bucks? Let me know in the comments below and if you have any questions for me, I will happily address them as well. There's a link in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself and pick one up. Thanks so much for giving me a few minutes of your time and if you wanna stick around for more tips and reviews, then you know where to find me. My name is Francis and I will see you in the next one.